Hi, my name's Mark, one of the pastors here at Trillium. There's something called theodicy. It's a fancy word, but what it attempts to, to describe in, in detail is a simple question. How can an all-loving, all-powerful, omnipotent God allow bad things to happen in life, to, to people, to, in situations and events of life? How does God allow these things to hurt and damage people, kill them even? I mean, think about that uh, bus crash in, in Saskatchewan when that hockey team was decimated in this, horror, in this horrific crash. And, and, and it creates a theodicy problem because many of these people on that bus were, were, were believing people. They believed in God, and, and yet it seems as if this God was absent in that critical moment when a truck and a bus collide. And as they say, 15 you know, young people mostly die. The coach dies, others die too. And, and a lot of broken hearts have been created instantly. And it's not just in Saskatchewan. At the same time, I noticed that there was this horrific bombing going on in Syria. And in the news report, it said like 50 people died. And you can see the story over and over again around the world. And the question is, where is God in all this? How do we explain it? Why do bad things happen to good people? And why do good things happen to bad people? And these questions are all part of the topic of theodicy. You know, God and evil, and how they can coexist in the world together. I mean, there is a simple solution. Uh, maybe there is no God. You know, maybe there, the reason evil and, and cruelty and violence can have its way in, in so many places in the world is because there is no God. Or maybe there is a God, but maybe God isn't all that powerful, at least in this reality. God might love us, but God can't really do very much. Or perhaps the other alternative is that God is powerful, but God is kind of whimsical, you know, moody. Uh, I'm going to bless this person this day, but tomorrow, nah, I don't think so. In, in any event, they all create a theodicy problem. And this is not just for non-believers to struggle with. It's especially, in some ways, for believers to struggle with. Those first disciples uh, around Jesus, when they're grappling with his death, on the cross have a theodicy problem. And we see this in the story of Emmaus when Cleopas and his companion are walking away from Jerusalem on Sunday morning. They're, they're uncertain about what's actually have just unfolded. The women have come back to the tomb from the tomb and reported to the disciples that there's no body there and they'd had an angelic vision, but Cleopas is still confused about what had already happened before that. Like how could the Messiah be arrested and convicted, crucified, and die. How, how is that possible that God's chosen one could undergo such evil in life? What does it say about God? What does it say about the Messiah, too? How is it even possible? You know, it's interesting, the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, doesn't try to really answer the question of theodicy, the question of God, an all-loving, all-powerful God living in the midst of evil. It doesn't really try to answer that. Where did evil come from? How could God make a perfect world and allow evil to come into it? I mean, there's Adam and Eve in the first story in the Bible, and the serpent's sitting there tempting them. Where did, where did that serpent come from? Don't know. How, how is the serpent allowed to exist in paradise? Don't know. Why would God allow the serpent to even stay there and tempt Adam and Eve? We don't know. Why would God abandon Jesus as Messiah right in the middle of the crisis moment. Don't know. Where is God in Humboldt, Saskatchewan? The Bible doesn't try to answer that question, really. What the Bible says in answer to the violence and evil of life is one simple moment. It, it comes to the disciples on, on the journey to Emmaus, those two guys. Jesus walks beside them. They don't recognize him. They don't see him for who he is. They're so uh, conditioned to believe that when you die, you're dead forever. They don't have any expectation to see Jesus. But there he is walking beside them. And eventually, in breaking bread with him, they wake up and they see the truth. And the invitation in that story is for us to go past our conditioning about life and open our minds and our hearts to the possibility of the one who walks to me is walking beside us. Jesus is alive. God is at work. Even in the midst of tragedy, God is there.